you can count on. This is WTVM News Leader 9. New eye-opening numbers coming in from the CDC about suicide on the same week two successful icons take their lives. We'll have a closer look at this alarming trend. And heart disease, a top leading cause of death in the United States as well. How one family is addressing this disease head on in East Alabama. Plus, school shootings making headlines every month in a special report on News Leader 9. School safety, our Rosalind Giles breaks down what the local school district is doing to help. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us for the News at 10. I'm Rosalind Giles. And I'm Jason Dennis. Our top story, a jury in Columbus finding the lone suspect on trial in the Upatoy triple murder case guilty on five charges. But it's a mistrial for the other five counts. This stems from the tragic killings of Gloria Short, her teen son Caleb, and granddaughter Gianna Lindsay. News at 9, Sharifa Jackson was in the courtroom as the verdicts were read. It was five days and nearly 30 hours of deliberation to get to this point. The jury returning only a partial verdict for the 17 year old defendant Rufus Burks. And this decision was made with a lot of closed door conflict and contention. George Warmore filed a defamation and political conspiracy lawsuit against the women who accused him of sexual misconduct. Moore and his attorneys say the accusations are false and designed to destroy Moore's reputation. The women who made the allegations all maintain they are telling the truth and have no political motivation. Here's Moore's attorney. We intend to look at the timing and the context. We intend to look at how these people are, are connected and we intend to we, we have a lot of research, we have a lot of discovery to do. We've done a lot already, or this wouldn't have been filed. A reporter asked Moore if he would run for office again before he could answer. His attorney stepped in and said the news conference wasn't about that. Here, you got a nice hole, you can sit up on that side now. It's new but unwanted decor to a home on Morehouse Street, not the only home with that unusual decoration. We're talking about bullet holes. Those living on Morehouse Street say they are scared to be in their own homes after multiple drive-by shootings have left those homes with those bullet holes. Uh, some say that the bullets barely missed them and their children. Neighbors say there have been at least three shootings in the area since September. Police are investigating and asking anyone with information to come forward. Columbus police are issuing warrants for suspects in two separate murders from earlier this year. Their first warrant is issued for Tyree Smith, seen here. Smith is wanted in connection with the shooting death of local rapper Brandon Denson. He was shot down in a Pizza Hut parking lot on the 4200 block of University Road. Three other suspects have already been arrested and are facing charges in that shooting. Investigators also have issued a warrant for 21-year-old DeCarlos Warren. He's wanted in connection with the shooting death of Daryl Boggins. Boggins was shot on Winston Road in late April, died later at Piedmont Columbus Regional Hospital. Boggins was also a victim in a separate shooting on Andrews Road that happened earlier that month. Well, here's a look at other, uh, both suspects, mug shots. Police say the men are considered armed and dangerous. And if you see either one of them, do not make contact. Instead, call police at the number on your screen. A 39 year old homicide case in Phoenix City is being revisited after a convicted serial killer offers new insight into nearly 100 murders. 78 year old Samuel Little, a native of Reynolds, Georgia, and a convicted California serial killer is serving a life sentence. But recently he confessed to 91 homicides spanning across the country, including the brutal killing of 23 year old Brenda Alexander of Columbus in 1979, which happened in Phoenix City. He gives us details of the he gives details of the August 26 night when he took her life. He was the perpetrator. He gave information that only the perpetrator could have been privileged to the police department, my office. So we're convinced that this is the right guy. According to the FBI, Little is dealing with health issues and offered his statement in a deal to be transported to another prison. The Russell County District Attorney says Little will not step foot in an Alabama courtroom, but his case will still be prosecuted. It will be presented to a grand jury in February and Little's recorded interview will be played. In the race for Georgia governor, Republican Brian Kemp is pressing Democrat Stacey Abrams to concede the state's tight race as civil rights groups urge her to stay in and fight. Kemp's campaign issued a statement over the weekend saying it's mathematically impossible for Abrams to even force a runoff. They call Abrams' refusal to concede, quote, a disgrace to democracy. Unofficial returns show Kemp with 50.3 percent of nearly 4 million total votes, a roughly 63,000 vote lead over Abrams. 
The close margin in Georgia could signal more for Democrats. It's a state they may focus on in the 2020 elections. During the 2016 presidential election, President Donald Trump won Georgia, but experts say the peach state could change to blue, and it's something to watch for. Georgia could potentially be viable in, in other national races and possibly a, a presidential campaign as well. And I think that Democrats are very motivated by that and they will be very motivated by that. Georgia represents 16 electoral votes. The state hasn't voted Democratic in a presidential election since Bill Clinton in 1992. Republican Senator David Perdue is also up for re-election in 2020. He's expected to seek a second term. Something else many may focus on from the Georgia midterm is the high numbers in which voters showed up to the polls. The turnout was a record for a midterm election. More than 60% of about 6.5 million registered voters showed up statewide. Comparing this to past elections in the 2016 presidential election, 63% of voters participated in the election. And in 2010, 45% of registered voters participated in the elections. But in the 2010 election, the race for governor did not feature an incumbent. Georgia Governor Nathan Deal will convene a special legislative session to start tomorrow to help those impacted by Hurricane Michael. It's to provide emergency funding to state agencies and local governments following Hurricane Michael, which hit October 10th. Deal says this special session is necessary to, quote, minimize financial losses following the storm and to ensure Georgia's continued prosperity in the coming months. Unfortunately, still damp and dreary across the Chattahoochee Valley. We'll let you know when sunshine is back in the forecast coming up. A number of break ins happening in a normally quiet area of Columbus. We'll hear from the man who recently had his boutique broken into. An accident prone intersection in Auburn could finally see a change soon. What the Alabama Department of Transportation is proposing. Coverage can count on. This is WTVM News Leader 9, celebrating 65 years. Sponsored by Montlick and Associates, Columbus Injury Attorneys. Good morning and welcome to News Leader 9. I'm Cheryl Renee. The state of California turning into an inferno. Firefighters battling ferocious flames on both ends of the state, all as the death toll from the wildfires continues to rise. 44 people are confirmed dead, all but two from what's called the Campfire Wildfire. It is now the deadliest fire in the state's history, and hundreds are still missing. Weeks of little rain and warm high winds continue to fan the flames. While the state of California isn't getting enough rain, here in the valley we are getting plenty. Rain coming down on, on and off all day yesterday, but if you were hoping to put the umbrellas away today, Think again. Here is Storm Team 9 meteorologist Lauren Linehan with a look at your weather. Good morning. Good morning, Cheryl. Yeah, missing without a trace now found six months later and investigators are searching for answers. It's like he fell off the face of the earth. His, his phone, nothing on his credit cards, nothing on his uh, insurance card. 50 year old Sam Hewitt went missing from Columbus in May. His body was found across state lines in Russell County Sunday. Found inside his black 2016 GM Sierra pickup truck. He was last seen driving in a uh, CVS surveillance videotape. When News Leader 9 spoke with his father in September, Sam Hewitt Sr. said his son liked to gamble and hoped that didn't impact his disappearance. I feel like that he got caught between his house and one of those games and uh, they tried to rob him and he wasn't the kind that you could do that to. Details about where Hewitt's body was found and the cause of death have not been released yet. The Russell County Sheriff's Office will host a news conference at 11 this morning on the case. As we mentioned, Hewitt was first reported missing six months ago in May. After the missing persons report was filed, he was reportedly seen again May 18th on surveillance video at the CVS on Macon Road. In the video, he was seen driving his GMC pickup truck. Three months later in August, Hewitt's family paid for a billboard in Columbus to help in his search, even offering a cash reward. This was the last update before his body was found over the weekend. Bags are packed and it's time to hit the road. You don't want to be late. Today is the start of the busiest Thanksgiving travel season ever. When you should leave to beat the traffic, we'll tell you ahead. And a three day search coming to an end. Investigators identifying one man who has deep roots in Columbus. But what do investigators believe caused the accident? 
And we have new details about the funeral arrangements for model and actress Kim Porter. Where will her final resting place be? Well, not feeling too bad outside right now, but we are potentially going to see even colder weather as we head towards Thanksgiving. We'll let you know how it's looking for this afternoon coming up. Coverage you can count on. This is WTVM News Leader 9, celebrating 65 years. Sponsored by Montblick and Associates, Columbus Injury Attorneys. And welcome to News Leader 9 at noon. I'm Sharifa Jackson. We thank you for joining us today. Well, bags are packed and many have begun to hit the road or catch a flight to enjoy their holiday this week. And holiday travel has started and more people are expected to travel this year than in the last 13 years. And if you're driving, plan to use apps like Waze to help during your commute to see if there are any traffic delays. And if you're traveling by plane, you can use flightaware.com to check to see if your flight is still on time. That a frantic 911 call made two years ago played in court for jurors yesterday in Lee County, Alabama. 23-year-old Devontae Mike, the first of four suspects to go to trial in the 2016 Lee County home invasion turned homicide. Along with that 911 call, prosecutors heard from the widow, 85-year-old Kay Rudd, who took the stand, painting a picture of her husband dying after he tried to protect their home. I heard two shots, and then I heard Benny shoot one. Where on the body was he shot? It was like in the chest. That testimony revealed 22-year-old Robert Wiggins may have been the man who pulled the trigger and shot Rudd when uh, shots were exchanged. Defense attorney for Devontae Mike is looking for his charge to be changed to felony murder from capital murder, giving him the chance of parole if found guilty. Prosecutors today are expected to call more witnesses in that case. 37 after the hour, that's it until next November. Voters heading to the polls one more time to name a winner in two races that ended in a runoff last month. Georgia voters deciding who will be the next Secretary of State, and here are the numbers. Republican Brad Raffensperger defeated Democrat John Barrow. Uh, 52 to 48 percent. Raffensperger will replace current governor-elect Brian Kemp. And the third district seat for public service commissioner. Republican Chuck Eaton defeats Democrat Lindy Miller, 52 to 48 percent. Eaton re-elected for his third term in office. Well, it is a big day for Central High School as the football team is headed to the state championship. Uh, yesterday, fans of the school sent the team off in great fashion, hosting a mini parade as they left for Auburn for that uh, state championship game in 7A tonight. They'll face off against Thompson High School of Alabaster. Game time set for 8 o'clock Eastern time at jordan Hare Stadium. And you can watch that game live here on WTVM or on Bounce. Starts at 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central. Coach Chandler White on five. talk about another sport at Central High School, basketball. The girls coach has made her own headlines. Carolyn Wright hitting a milestone, reaching 500 career wins. Wright reached that record Saturday after the Red Devils beat their Russell County rival. Coach Wright was honored before last night's game against Opelika. She was totally surprised, even crying, after receiving the trophy. 